everyone, welcome to Springs Kids. I'm Katie and I'm so happy you're joining us today. If you're in grade one all the way up to grade six, this video is for you. We'd love to have you check out one of our G-Force classes in Winnipeg or in Calgary. You'll have so much fun playing fun games and doing praise and worship and learning a brand new Bible lesson every week. Each week, we talk about something so important to us, laugh. I'm not talking about just a traditional laugh where you're laughing at a joke, no. Here, we spell it L-A-F. L stands for love. We wanna show love to everybody around us. A stands for accept. God made everyone special and unique, and we wanna accept everyone the way they are. Lastly, F stands for forgive. Everybody makes mistakes, and so it's important that we learn to forgive each other. Just like last week, I got these super cool new pair of white shoes. I was so excited to wear them out to the park with my family. We decided to throw a frisbee around the park, and my brother and I tried to catch the frisbee at the same time. Next thing I knew, we both crashed, and my brother landed on my new white shoes. And I looked down, and they had a stain on them, a muddy brown footprint. Now I had two choices. One, I could get really mad at my brother and blame him for staining my new shoes. Or two, I could realize that it was just an accident and I can forgive him and not let what happened to my shoes ruin my whole day. When we forgive others, it's not just for them. It's for us so we don't feel so heavy and angry inside. I chose option two and forgave my brother. After that, I had a fantastic day, and when I got home, I even got the stain out of my shoes. Today, we have a great lesson for you. Let's start by taking a look at God's Word with this month's Bible Challenge. I'm so glad we're all here today at GeForce. This month, we're learning about compassion. Compassion is all about caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. Compassion is about looking for ways that we can help others. When we show compassion to the people around us, we're treating others the way we want to be treated. We all know what it feels like when somebody makes time to help us. So we should look for ways to do just that. It could be something small, like sharing your snack with someone, or taking a moment, pausing your video games, and helping your mom carry in the groceries. Showing compassion is a great way to show the love of Jesus to others. Our memory verse this month helps us remember this. It says, in the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so they will praise your Father in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. I think it's pretty amazing that the way we live can help other people learn about God. When we have compassion for people and do something kind for them, it's like we're shining our light for everybody to see. So it's really important that we shine and don't cover it up. Now it's time to stand up and get ready for one of my favorite parts of service, praise and worship. Let's do it. Everything keeps telling me to quit and I go where I'm going.
Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're taking a look at the very brightest light of all time. Hey, Zeke, uh, have you? Shh, you're gonna need this. What? Uh, why? Oh, oh. oh, that's why. Hey, I'm Zeke. And I'm Carter. And all month, we're talking about how trusting and following Jesus changes the way we treat others. Thanks for treating me to these shades. By the way, want to explain? Well, it's been rainy and overcast where we are for about a decade now. Just 12 days. Long days. Monsoon season. How much more rain can there be? Another week? Oh. Yeah, it's got me down to. Well, it's time to take matters into our own hands. Behold! Yeah, we can see a lamp. Not just a lamp. This is a 10,000 lux sun lamp. Oh, I got you now. Friends, do not look directly at a sun lamp. Keep it to one side like this. Wise words. No matter how dark things get, 30 minutes in front of this sweet model can trigger the release of serotonin in your brain, just like real sunlight. Serotonin is a chemical in your body that helps you feel happy. It can make you more focused, emotionally stable, and calmer. Thank you, cheerful disembodied voice. Extra happy to help. <laughs> See, the lamp is working for everyone. We might as well do something with all this awesome sunlight. Like what? Suncatcher? <laughs> Suncatcher? I'm in. Let's make it! We shall now capture and distill the very essence of the sun into this ordinary bottle. That's not what we're doing. Oh. Step one. Gather all your old, used up, broken up crayons. So many memories. Make sure to remove any paper that's left, and then you're going to shred those crayons. You got to think bigger, my friend. Oh, that'll work too. What next? Step two, lay down a sheet of parchment paper. Here you are, thank you. Now, sprinkle a layer of crayon shavings all over your parchment. Next, layer a second sheet of parchment on the top. You'll want to tape it down. On it. Step three, you'll need a hairdryer because things are about to heat up in here. It's time to melt those crayons. All right, what's the next step? All right, step four, take your sheet of melted crayons and cut out shapes. You can do one big shape or you can do lots of little shapes. Use your imagination. Great. All you gotta do now is hang up your sun catchers with string and clear tape. Oh, very cool. 
You're using a shower of raindrops to catch some rays. A little light can make all the difference. Speaking of light, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of John, one of the four gospels that tells about the life of Jesus. John was one of Jesus' closest friends, right in the middle of everything. John wrote down what he saw and heard to help us understand who Jesus truly is. The Son of God. John recorded these stories in a really cool way. He shared about several signs or miracles that Jesus did. And John also wrote down specific things that Jesus said about himself, what we call the I am phrases. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Today we're going to dive into something incredible that Jesus said. But first, we're gonna go back to an earlier time. See, John didn't start his story of Jesus with the manger and shepherds and angels. John began with the very beginning. John wrote that God created everything in the whole universe through Jesus. From before the dawn of time, Jesus has been the source of all life and light. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome the light. Ah, light shows up throughout God's story. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born as a baby, Isaiah wrote of a bright light to come. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. And when Jesus was born, God's people were still waiting for that light. Many of them expected a splendid king who would defeat their enemies in a blaze of glory. But Jesus arrived as a tiny baby. He grew up as a humble carpenter. As Jesus began to travel and teach, he started to shine God's light in a very different way. In John, we read how Jesus turned water into the very best wine so a wedding celebration could continue. He spent time with people who were considered outcasts and showed them God's love. Jesus healed a man who had been sick and unable to walk for 38 years. Jesus fed more than 5,000 people using just five loaves of bread and two small fish. He even walked on water. Mm -hmm. All of these signs began to paint a picture of who Jesus is. Anytime that Jesus saw a need, he did something about it. But the religious leaders weren't happy with Jesus. He was changing the way they'd always done things. And he didn't back down when they challenged him. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness. They will have that light. They will have life. I am the light of the world. Jesus was telling the religious leaders and everybody else, that he is God's rescuer, sent to bring light to a dark world. So what does it mean for us that Jesus is the light of the world? Well, when it's dark, yikes! You don't know which way to go, it's confusing, you might bump into a wall or walk right over the edge of a cliff. We need light so we can see the path ahead and know where to go. Jesus brings light to guide us in the right direction. We need Jesus to help us make wise choices. The light that Jesus brings can also help us grow. Just like a plant needs light to thrive, we need God's light to show the places where we can grow to become more like Jesus. But even more than guiding us and helping us grow, the light of Jesus meets our greatest need. See, we've all done wrong things that hurt others and break our relationship with God. This is called sin, and we can't fix it on our own. It's like living in the dark. But Jesus came to take the consequences of our sin and bring us back to relationship with God. When we turn away from the wrong things we've done and choose to follow Jesus, it's as if he shines a bright light into our hearts and our lives. As Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness. They will have that light. They will have life. And that is a the end. 
Jesus is the light of the world. What a cool word picture. Dare I say this has been a light bulb moment? For real. There's nothing so dark that Jesus can't bring light to it. So, what's our part in the story? Well, we all need light in our lives. Every single one of us has done wrong things that hurt others and break our relationship with God. And we can't fix that. But God saw our need and sent Jesus to be light in our darkness. When we choose to follow Jesus, we can live with God forever. It's the most amazing show of compassion ever. And compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. God met our greatest need, and we don't just need the light of Jesus one time. We need it over and over every day of our lives. When you face a tough decision and don't know which way to go, you can ask Jesus for wisdom. To shed a little light on things. You can also ask God to show you where you need to change to become more like Jesus. Like growing in kindness or patience. I could use a little light in those places for sure. I think we all can. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Jesus is the light of the world. Even when it's been raining for 12 days Especially straight. Especially when it's been raining for 12 days straight. Ready? Ready. Hit it. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.
Maybe you're listening today and you're wondering who this God person we're talking about is. If that's you, I want to tell you that God loves you so much that he wants to have a relationship with you. But you see, there was a problem. We all have sin. Sin is the unkind and wrong choices we make. That sin separated us from a relationship with Jesus. Think of sin like a locked door, keeping us from God. But God had a plan. He sent his only son, Jesus, here to the world to live a perfect life with no sin. Jesus loved us so much, he went to the cross, died, and came back to life to forgive us of all the sins we'd ever do in our lives. Think of it like Jesus being the key to unlock that locked door between us and God. When we ask him to, Jesus comes into our lives and he wipes us clean and forgives us of our sin. Our sins are forgiven and forgotten about. Jesus did this because he loves us so much he wanted to have a relationship with us. But he won't force his way into your life. You get to make that choice. If you've never asked Jesus to be your best friend, you can do it in three easy steps. The first is A. Admit that you've sinned and made mistakes. B is to believe. Believe that Jesus is God's son and that his death and resurrection paid for your sins. And C is to choose. Choose to live a life for Jesus. When you make the choice to start a relationship with Jesus, he goes with you everywhere because he wants to make sure that you live the best life ever. We are all going to pray together and if you want to begin that relationship, all you have to do is repeat the words after me. It goes like this. Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I believe in you. Please forgive me. Help me to grow every day and be more like you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome. If you made the decision today to start a relationship with Jesus, please tell an adult in your life because that is an incredible choice you just made. Once you've told that adult, you can also ask them to email us at kids at springschurch.com or reach out to us on our social media because we would love to get you a Bible. Also, ask them to subscribe to our Springs Kids YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss a lesson. I've had so much fun here with you guys. See you next week.